Hey, it's Yuka. Notion released an update recently called Notion Sites that allows you to publish your Notion pages that look like websites. I'll show you how I made this website using Notion Sites, which I'll have the duplicate button on so you can duplicate it from here and make it yours. This is perfect for content creators and anyone who is on a time crunch because it's so easy to edit and you don't have to do any coding or do anything complicated. They did used to have, and they still do have a publish feature before, but I think it was similar to how you can share a link for your Google Docs. With the new Notion sites, we got a few more features that help it differentiate from sharing a document in a site. So let's go over the components one by one. First, let's look at the customization menus. So if you go to the share button, this one is already shared, but if you go to share, you see this new button on the site customization page and you can set a bunch of new different things. Starting with the share preview, this one is basically, you can upload an image here or keep it as is. This will be the OGP, I think they're called the image that gets shared as a thumbnail when you share it in other platforms. You can upload your image here. I just uploaded my own image here. You can also set the theme to be system themes. So that changes depending on the user or the viewer system setting, or you can set it to light or dark. I have it set to light because I just kind of designed it that way, but when I change to dark, the color scheme won't really work. So I'm just going to set it to light regardless of the setting that the viewer has. You can also set your own favicon. If you don't have your own, you will have the Notion logo as a default. And then for the header, there are a bunch of different settings here where you can turn on and off, but you can have breadcrumbs, which is like this top bar here. This one, if you go into some other page, this will show like the hierarchy of the pages that you're in. And then you can toggle on or off, search button, duplicate as template. I will keep this on for this site. And then the Notion watermark, this used to not be able to turn off for the free version, but if you don't have a custom domain, which I'll talk about later, this used to be not able to toggle off, but now apparently you can, so you can turn this off to get rid of the Notion watermark. And then for the navigation, you can actually set what I have here. You can set any page that is underneath the hierarchy of this page so that people can navigate to that page easily. I have these two pages, favorite things, and the say hi page, which I will also talk about in more detail later. So let's go back to the header. You can also add Google Analytics if you want to do that as well. And then once you have everything, you can just click on the publish changes and it will publish. So now when you go to the view sites, you will see your page and everything. The navigation is here. Everything is loading like this. It looks great. One thing to know is that if you happen to change something here, this change will not automatically go live unless you go and click on this button, publish changes. With the regular sharing, you will be able to change anything and it will just kind of automatically get pushed to the live site version. But since this is more like a website and not a wiki, I guess, you will have to push that button for it to go live. So if you are not seeing the changes happen, make sure you have pushed that button. Now all you have to do is edit everything on your page as you would normally do on Notion. Let me just go step by step, block by block on what I've done on this page. So up here, this is the title. And then I have a image that I like cut out to this shape. And this is like a two column block that I have here adjusted to this size. This one is a call out block that I made with my little icon. And I have like my name and what I do and where I'm based in my email. The second part is the social media links. So people can follow me everywhere, but these are all linked. And these are also individual call outs, but I like this because you can upload your own social media icons here. So that's what I did here. And the next part is also a call out. I do really love my call outs. I have a podcast that I do in Japanese and I have embedded Apple podcasts 
little widget thing on here. And this is super easy. If you have a link to your podcast page, you can just paste it here. There are different types of pasting options. To embed, you obviously have to click on the create embed and it will create a little block with all of these beautifully designed thing. And you can also like make it smaller or bigger. So if you want to, like for example, take this over here and make it smaller or something. This is probably a little bit too small, but you get the idea. If you want to make it smaller in like a two column block, you can do that as well. But this is a really cool way to show off your podcast if you have one. Or if you have a favorite playlist, your favorite artist, you can show off in an embed like this. Next block is also a call out where I have a newsletter sign up block. My newsletter is hosted on Beehive. This is also in Japanese. So if you are curious, I will have the link below. This is a working embed. So you can type your email address here and sign up. The same exact thing. I took the URL of the sign up form and pasted it here to create an embed. Next up, I have a database that is also nested within the callout. So it looks a little bit better. But what I did here is kind of like a link gallery. So if I talked about a product or a book or something and people are looking for it again, they can easily come here to find the links of everything. And I have everything sorted by category and I have the brand listed like this. So it's easy for people to navigate, but also when this is all closed, it's very pretty. Next part is also a call out, but I format it in a different way. This is kind of like the featured section of the links. So I did like favorite iPad accessories, which I talked about in my last video, if you haven't checked that out. So what I did here is just pasted a link and created a bookmark instead of an embed. If I have a link, I can go like this to create a bookmark and it will create a bookmark with a little photo as well. So it's easy to see what I'm talking about. Going back to the links gallery, I have this favorite things database that I made within this page. I have the gallery view and also the table view for just to make it easier for me to edit. If I have a new product, I can just go to new and create a product and add all these information here. And it's super easy, much easier than traditional CMS. Hopefully I can keep it up to date. The thing about these type of you know, databases or CMS or blogs is it's really difficult to keep them up to date. And if you're using a CMS, it might be a little bit complicated or you just forget to do it. I have been on the internet for a very long time, but I am very guilty of forgetting to do things or just being lazy and not update things as much as I would like to. But since I'm on Notion literally every single day, it's really easy for me to go in and add a few things here and there. Another page I made that I also linked on the header is this say hi section. This is actually a contact page and you can actually write your name and email and send me a message. I'm not really sure if I will actually use this, but I just wanted to show that this is possible. I made this embed with a website called Noteforms. If you want to check that out, I'll link it down below. If you submit something here, well, let me actually show you. Test, hi, hi, hi. And then if I submit, this goes into a database and I will get a message here saying someone send, send me a message. This will create a new line within this contact database but I'm not really sure. I would rather get things in email than this. So I'm not sure if I'll use it in reality, but I just wanted to show you that it could be possible. So that was the Notion pages part, but let's go to the settings, which is also equally important. If you go into the sites section of your settings page, you will see all the published sites that you've done. This is kind of like the traditional publishing that was available before. It was like sharing. On top of that, we have the domain section now. So right now I only have the yukaoishi.notion.site, which is like the free domain that comes with my Notion subscription. But if you want to, you can actually add your own custom domain, but this will cost to another $96 per year, which is $8 per month. And it's actually not bad compared to other services like Wix, 
Squarespace, the competitors of the world. I might do this later on, but I just wanted to try with my Notion domain for now. So if you are already a paid subscriber for Notion, you will get one Notion domain attached with your subscription. So you should try that out first. This part where you can add a homepage, what this means is that you can add a page to be the top level landing page for this domain. So if nothing is selected, if you go to yukaoishi.notion.site, the page doesn't really exist and you will have to go to this site and the web page will be like yukaoishi.notion.site and it will have like a bunch of numbers and URLs here. But if you add the yukaoishi page as the home page, this now becomes the top level. Oop, this still does have this, but I think you can delete this part and it will still redirect to this page. In summary, I think Notion Sites is great when you want to keep updating on the go. You can even use the phone app to update your page. However, there are some quirks at the moment where there is no publish changes button on the iOS version. So in order to push your changes, you have to unpublish, then publish again. But then when you do that, some settings might get reverted. So I would suggest if you really need to change something on the go, make your changes on your mobile, but press the button on the website version so it doesn't break anything. It's not a huge deal right now. It's a little bit of a quirk. I think it might be even a bug, but it will be cool to have feature parity on mobile version in the future. And I, I'm pretty sure they're working on it right now. Another thing with mobile is that there is built-in responsive design. So when you build on desktop, some layout is automatically changed. So it's easier to view on mobile. This comes with pros and cons because the blocks might not look the way you want it to. And there's not much granular control that you can make. I recommend when you are building the site, go to the mobile version every now and then to check and make sure it's looking the way you want it to. Hope this was helpful. And on this channel, I share a lot about tech and creativity, including both hardware and software. There will be more Notion content coming soon, so please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.